Uh, Jason, uh, thanks for joining us uh, this morning. Let's, we're all still talking about what happened on, on Friday. I have people um, telling me that Jay Powell couldn't have been any clearer about what the intentions were about inflation. I have other people saying, yeah, but they haven't really had to, to dispense that much really hard medicine yet. And, you know, when the going gets tough, they're, you know, they're going to probably not be as courageous as they need to be. Where do you stand? I think the Fed is, is embarrassed, and that's the worst thing that can happen to a public official. It's like they held a Labor Day barbecue, and uh, everybody showed up. They had a deep frozen steak, and they threw it on a super hot grill. And now the meal doesn't taste so good, and everybody's looking around saying, gosh, I really wish <laughs> they could have <laughs> right, really uh, brought this economy out a little more slowly. So now they're trying to fight that, um, trying to fight that reality. And I think if you look back at the times when a Fed official was embarrassing or the, the history uh, is, is not so good, people are talking about Arthur Burns over and over again. Uh, that was an inflationary challenge. Clearly, we had a number of Fed officials oversee recessions. Um, that's been a problem, of course, and is maybe damaging to a legacy, but nothing like letting inflation get out of control like this. So I think they'll stay the course uh, much more than the market had thought maybe on uh, Thursday. We could talk fixed income for, for the entire interview, uh, Jason, with, with your background, but you, you do try to help clients with a total return. Uh, it, it, are you seeing opportunities in, in I don't know, dividend-paying stocks, REITs, corporates? What, how would you do that right now, and what do you think you can deliver safely uh, to people? There really is a much more opportunity for balance in portfolios in ways that, that work. So not only is that in the context of asset allocation, where, as you say, fixed income is paying you a lot more than it was. Um, I mean, great. Uh, it was terrible before. Now it's less terrible. Uh, but actually, there's, there's some really good value out there. Um, a few names that we really like. Uh, MasterCard, obviously inflation, or inflation resistant on one hand. Uh, on the other hand, a company like Enel in Europe, which is exposed to renewables and very, very cheap, below 10 times. So you want to have a bunch of different things working in this environment. Um, the one place I really don't like is sort of the, the hey, it's down 80 percent, it must be good kinds of names. Uh, that's, that's not where balance is, is in this market right now. Jason, we, we had the, the, what happened on Friday, uh, and then we had yesterday, which was kind of constructive maybe. Now we're up to day. I don't know if it holds. We, we don't know. But would you take that performance, given what Jay Powell said? And, and what we don't know the counterfactual, if they had seemed very dovish. Are we guaranteed that we'd be doing better now if the Fed had shown if it, that it was going to blink? I, I, I think maybe we, we should thank our lucky stars for what Jay Powell said Friday versus what he might have said, which we could end up in a worse spot. Yeah, Joe, I think you make a great point. So in the near term, we sort of say, oh, gosh, they caused the market to go down. But um, we'd much rather have them be credible, right? The steak tastes bad that we're eating, but uh, at, least, at least we've got something to eat. So I think we are going to have some volatility ahead. Look, we've had it all year. That's not news. Uh, but I think the, for a while, the market sort of felt like, hey, the worst is over. Maybe the worst is over. I'm actually not sure, but I can tell you that the volatility is not over. So, yes, the Fed credibility is the number one thing that this market needs and wants right now, because without that, as they say, you don't have anything else. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is now the Fed, certain members, Kashkari is an example, are actually openly saying, hey, we need the market to go down. Uh, I think the Fed's really gotten themselves in a trap talking about trying to talk up and down the market. Uh, it's just not an institution that's really equipped for that. What would you do over the next week or month for, for the money that, that, let's say you had new money, what would you do? It's, it's, it's as simple as putting it together in a portfolio that has, again, that balance. So uh, what we look at, for example, in the investment income builder is just a set of global dividend payers, as you mentioned, um, that are not expensive at all relative to the market, that are going to provide some, some really interesting income uh, that lightens the load on the fixed income side and really just gives us something where, we're, look, we're not trying to get rich quick here. We're trying to get rich slow, and, and that compounding is really powerful.